Very good evening, viewers. Thanks for joining us here on The Urban Debate. I'm Afrida Rahman Ali, and today we have an exclusive story for you. We had earlier discussed how four states had openly expressed opposition to the newly announced education policy. The Tamil Nadu School Education Minister, Anbil Mahesh, exclusively speaks to Mirror Now, making it official for the first time that Tamil Nadu will now have its own education policy. So by doing so, it becomes the first stage to announce a breakaway from the NEP or the National Education Policy. Speaking exclusively to Mirror Now, the Tamil Nadu minister said that they will bring experts from all over the state and basis that form a state education policy. He further said that most of the states are against the national education policy and that they will decide what is best for their state. So we are going to, of course, play out that interview for you where the minister has made it crystal clear that they do not want any interference in deciding the state education policy. There will be no reference even to the national education policy. This will be a complete new process of formulating the state education policy for Tamil Nadu and they will defend the state education policy. In fact, what the leader also said is that it's not just Tamil Nadu, many other opposition rule states are also at loggerheads with the center and uh, the national education policy in that sense is an imposition. So that is where the debate lies on whether this is a friction over federalism again. Ever since the policy was announced, now with the TN minister saying it officially, he has set the cat among the pigeons where the question remains, is the national ex uh, education policy something that all states have accepted? Will this uh, become a precedent now? The question remains and I want to ask the question tonight to the experts who will join us. Is the national education policy become a new flashpoint between the centre and the state, reigniting? the friction over federalism. The center claims the policy was framed over years after due consultations with all stakeholders. Why then does it happen that policies are challenged by the states after they're announced? Now remember, as per Constitution of India, the higher education is a concurrent list by virtue of which the center can implement directly any policy decisions in the states. If there is any conflict, the center's decision will prevail. And therefore, there are some important questions to be answered here. What happens to this state education policy vis-a-vis -vis the center's new education policy? What exactly has the school education minister of Tamil Nadu said to Mira now? Let's first listen in. How is the works for uh, the state education policy going on, sir? What can we expect? On 15th, um, uh, um, on 15th, our honorable chief minister, he convened that meeting, like almost 13 members. Uh, announced members they participate that so every alternate Saturdays they are planning to uh, have these kind of meetings so based on that each and every meeting they will be getting inputs from various types of uh, uh, people around our state so based on that we will form uh, the SCP. So how is it going to be different from the NEP? That you have to wait and see madam because it is very too early for this it's like almost uh, uh, seven days baby <laughs> okay so each and every uh, alternate Saturday will be convened this meeting so based on that each and every meeting will have on each developments on that topic. The object of the state education policy because if you are, no right now we are formulating the... See our CM is having a lot of uh, thing on his mind as uh, we already told like uh, on the NEP like almost uh, most of the states like we are against NEP and we have uh, uh, as we already discussed about a lot about this NEP. So what are the things like we can adapt from um, for the SCP? So for the SCP, what we initially planned is like, what are the things like we want our state? That we will decide. We don't want to have the references in NEP. So we will de define our own uh, SCP. So for that only, we have almost uh, 13 different kinds of people from 13 different fields. So based on that, we will take a call on that one. Well, joining me here tonight, Bhavna Ramanna, actor and activist, Mr. Mohan Krishna, BJP leader, Mr. S.S. Sriram, who's a political analyst, and also Mr. Nayan Parikh, educationist. I'm hoping to be uh, joined uh, by Nayan Parikh in just a bit. Uh, and also, I'm hoping to be joined by A. Sarvanan, who's a spokesperson of the DMK shortly. But let's begin the conversation. And I want to just begin by asking this question on what the state minister just said, and we heard it, 
He's saying very clearly that what we want for our state, we will decide. We don't want to have references from the NEP. We have formed the committee of 13 prominent personalities from 13 different fields, and they will do the due diligence for the state of Tamil Nadu. So the issue is, Bhavna Ramanna, can Tamil Nadu exist in isolation? Can there be a separate education policy for one state which is in direct contravention with the center's policy? Can you be sure that the students will not suffer in the process? I don't think actually they mean by, they mean that. What, what do you hear the question is, it's not that. When the NEET exam, when they made it universal for the central board, the kids who studied in the state board, they could not actually decode the examination. It was completely difficult for them. So it was earlier, it was a good combination of having, even Karnataka, we had our own central uh, entrance test. So CET, which were, were in the engineering, so as the uh, medical student could appear in the examination, they also had another chance of choice of doing other exams as well. Now with the whole thing is taking off the, the state exams, what, the, what we had, and the state allocation, what we had, they have taken off it completely. And the, the children who have studied in the state syllabus, it is absolutely difficult for them to decode the examination, which is, which is conducted by the central board alone. So I think Mr. Stalin government, whatever they're saying, irrespective of the political thing, me, I have been a part of, uh, earlier I've been, uh, I've served as chairperson of Bal Balbhavan in Bangalore and Karnataka government, Karnataka. But then it talks about the curriculum of the children and everything. But as for the 2020 educational national education policy bill, it looks, on the whole, it looks very, very good. It, it sounds great and everything. But the thing is, the children who are studying in rural, children who are part of the taluk area, children who are part of the towns, who are not part of the metro. But how is that part. only applicable to Tamil Nadu, Bhavna Ramana? That, that would be a logic that would extend to other states. Karnataka has welcomed it. Assam has welcomed it. Wouldn't they also have the same concerns? Because we had the same thing earlier. That's what I'm seeing. Karnataka had our own CET, central exam, entrance test we had which was absolutely fine for the children if they want to appear for the uh, the other uh, test, which is conducted by the government, which is absolutely fine. But now it is just one way. You stick to only one <coughs> thing. It is not done, I think. You know, children should have more and more choices and more and for more options. According to their own capacity, they should be able to appear to the exams where they feel comfortable. Let me have Mr. Mohan Krishna respond to that. Mr. Krishna, you also heard the education minister saying that we have got the best minds to formulate the policy which would be best for Tamil Nadu and we do not need the national education policy. So that has been set aside and a whole new process is now activated in Tamil Nadu. How do you respond to this? Uh, good evening, Aprita. Good evening. I start with the Sanskrit shloka, Vidya Dadati Nilayam. That means education gives way for, you know, humbleness. I am missing that in the attitude of the Tamil Nadu government. That Vidya, that Vinayam is missing with Tamil Nadu government. That is the basic attitude of the Tamil Nadu government today has brought to the confrontation level in each and every aspect of the central government's uh, policies, as well as with the, what about the uh, central government takes the decision for that matter today in not only just Tamil Nadu for that matter, Tamil Nadu more so even higher, the most of the states today, they are opposing the national education policy and need also for that matter, but they have forgotten one thing, 8 lakh 12,000 students have passed last year in 12th standard of the Tamil Nadu government. Out of which, I think Sharavanan should answer this. 70% of the students are Tamil, Tamil medium students. Uh, maybe, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about it. But what I am trying to tell you today is, the new education policy stresses on the mother language the improvement of mother language in professional process. What they have forgotten today is they are trying to bring in the 
I mean, the kind of a stableness or a kind of a, uh, you know, uh, the people, the students has to forget the competitiveness of with world. They have to compete with in, in, within India as well as with the world. Mm -hmm. After 12th standard, they have to go for the professional courses. Yes, in okay. Professional courses. I will give example. Just mm -hmm. give me a minute. I sure, just please finish. Example. Yes. In Japan, in Japan, they study in their Japanese language all the professional courses. And in Germany, they have the best technology, but they study in German languages. So why not adopt the same thing? See, this was the problem with the earlier education policy. Our Honorable Prime Minister and education experts, they have sat with the several governments of the states and they have found out the aspirations of the students, what they have. As per the aspirations, this policy has been made with the professional language, professional courses to be in mother languages. That was the demand of the earlier education policy. And coming back to one more thing, I would like to just make a point here. The earlier government took 35 years. After 35 years, this education policy has been made. What on this earth? was stopping them to change the policy every now and then. As the technology is growing, people are getting more competitive, and the world is getting competitive. OK, I we got your point, Mr. Point. Krishna. You're saying the new education policy is upgraded. It is meant to allow students to adapt to the competition nationally and globally. Why resist such a progressive move? With, with, Mr. With, A. Sarvanan you know, has also to, joined us. Yes, yeah, no, let, let, add, let Mr. Sarvanan respond to the it, points you made. There's a whole line of points that he has to respond to, so let's just get started with that. Yes, Mr. Sarvanan, I heard you were yes. listening intently. It comes back to yes, the same Sarvanan. issue again, isn't it? There is a language issue here again. There is an issue of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the local language students being, uh, in, a, in a sense, in a disadvantageous position. Yes, yes, Afrida. I was listening to what uh, Mr. Mohan Krishna was saying and of course the others. See, the fundamental point starts from this. The BJP's obsession with oneness should end. They should not forget that we are a multicultural society and the different people need different things, not the same thing. Oneness is alien to our culture, to our country, and it will not work that apart. If you look at the national education policy, it, its aim is to, one of the aims probably is to bring the GER, that is the gross enrollment ratio to up to 50 percentage. And in the state of Tamil Nadu, the gross enrollment ratio is already 51.4 percentage. The national average is hovering around 27.4 percentage or something. So how will this policy help the state of Tamil Nadu? We are already there. So the focus should be somewhere else. So that is what we are saying. We are already 15 years ahead of what you are talking about. That is why we are saying, please leave us alone. We know what to do. And if you look at the policies, whatever that has been spoken about, in the state of, specific to the state of Tamil Nadu, we have introduced last month, we have introduced a scheme called Enumeritum, that is numerals and alphabets. The kindergarten, kindergarten or uh, primary school children who have been left out, of, uh, left out due to COVID, they have been given special emphasis, special focus, so that they will not lag behind the numerics, learning but Mr. Numerics Sarvan, and you do realize that, yes. uh, you know, education is a concurrent subject. Do you really have a choice going ahead with the state education policy is what I want to yeah. understand. Because my yeah, understanding asking, is yeah. that if there is a conflict, the center's policy will prevail. To what extent are you no, willing no. to take this for, forward? Yes, 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 Afrida, you're right. When hmm. we speak about that legally, the policies, the policies, of course, the state policy, when you talk about a concurrent subject, only the law made by the central government will or may prevail. But even the constitution has given the lassitude or it has found a way to mix this, to find a way out of this conundrum when there is a conflict. So that is the difference. See, the question now is, is the union government willing to impose its will? We are saying we have a robust system going on. No, we how, know how is it an imposition? It. Because this is for the country at large. It is not just specifically for Tamil Nadu. Are you saying that, that there is some is, selective targeting yes. that is being done? 
How so? Because yes. other states have welcomed it. How is it that Karnataka has welcomed this? It's a southern state as well. No, no that's I... what one man food is another's poison. See, that's because Karnataka has welcomed it. Doesn't mean that is why I gave you this example of this gross enrollment ratio. And how can somebody, some bureaucrat sitting in New Delhi, decide what someone should study in Kanyakumari? I'm saying this is alien. This will not provide the desired results. And already the funds that are going to come for this education is given by the state governments. We have already increased it to 35,000 crores from 33,000 crores. So we, we, are, we are in the progressively doing and we have various schemes. We have announced various My schemes. only concern is, Mr. Sarvanan, is yes. it in the best interest yes. of the Tamil students? Will they be able Absolutely. to compete with the rest of the country? Uh, to what yes. extent can you be Africa protective way, about minute, the Tamil yes. students? Yeah, you're, 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 uh, yes. Are you, yes, are you going to be able to, you know, create a level playing field for the students? Ultimately, what concerns us is that the students should not suffer in the long run in this whole crossfire between center and state and let me get a neutral voice here uh, yes. mr ss yes. sri ram and nayan parik you first mr sri ram let, that, that is not okay a mr voice. nayan parik is an educationist <laughs> mr sri ram uh, can uh, give his opinion first so i can understand where he stands yes mr sri no ram. no it still reminds my neutral voice you don't decide what i speak and no, no, you don't we, detect where the people are entitled it's my to neutral, know whether you are neutral or not. Let me make it very clear. It's my neutral voice and I don't need your certificate either. I want to start, ahead, sir. It's left to the I people. Like it's to... left to the people whether you are neutral or not. Okay, let's, 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 hear let's, let's hear him out before we decide. Let's let's hear out Mr. Sriram. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would like to uh, first clarify. Whether it is, your voice is neutral or not. Okay, sure. Let's let's hear him out. Yes. Yeah. First of all, I would like to clarify a point. I think uh, disadvantages to okay. uh, the Tamil Nadu uh, government schools. Let me make it clear: the lady who was spearheading this fight for NEET was none other than Nalli Chidambaram, who was very keen that every school or every education should should go a uh, medical should go through NEET. And for your kind information, before NEET, ten years, the number of students who got into medical exam in Tamil Nadu from government schools were the hardly hundred. In the last three years. Through the need, every year, minimum of 300 students have got, the government school kids I'm talking about, have gone through need, have gone into education. So the numbers are there to prove that need has only been an advantageous position and not otherwise. Now, with regards to uh, the, the national education policy, uh, I'm sure the brain behind the new education policy is uh, not uh, uh, people of, uh, you know, um, of somebody who have just, uh, or, a, or a bunch of politicians, these are eminent personalities who have thought for the country, who have obviously spent a good amount of time in designing out a program for the students for the country. You just can't keep riding with your federal system as and when you want for your convenience. 10 years, you were the UPA person, you are the part of the government. You never thought it to be very important for an education policy then. Neither did you even bother about bringing the education which was a concurrent list to a state list. And you would Mr. like Shriram, to... Mr. Sriram, just drawing your attention quickly to the list of names yeah. running on your screens. Uh, the Tamil Nadu government says that we have a very enlightened panel who is going to form this, uh, who is going to be part of the de discussion and deliberation for the state education policy. The names are on our screens right now. Uh, you know, wh what makes you think that this is not being done for the best interests of the students in Tamil Nadu, Mr. Sriram? Respects to the panel, I have no uh, comments on the panel that they have formulated, but what are the reservations on the on the national committee that uh, the state government thinks that they are not good enough? So they should give them that reason as well. So my point is, Tamil Nadu can be good in many, many areas. So can be in other states and other areas. We can't try to keep single out that we are good, we are good, we are good, but we will not take need. When we say we, are, we take a great amount of pride in our quality of education, but when it comes to taking need, we say our students are not capable enough. What a kind of an, uh, you, know, contra, uh, you know, contradictive statement or very, very selective statement. Now, one has to have, they might have probable uh, uh, observations or views on the new education policy, but you have to sail as a nation. 
I mean, to, to say just because this union government has brought this, and in all uh, reason, the only and only reason for Tamil Nadu probably to, to go against this is on the... On the, on the you know, Mr. Sriram, and all, you know, some of the important pointers of the new education policy is running on our screens, and it actually encourages uh, the use of mother tongue, if I'm not mistaken, till fifth standard. There are, there are new provisions introduced to encourage uh, the, the, you know, local language and the proliferation of regional languages. And the Prime Minister himself has said about Tamil language, in fact, that it's one of the most beautiful languages. It needs all uh, the promotion, all kinds of, uh, you know, thrust should be given to regional languages. So why this mistrust, Bhavna Ramanna? Why? Yeah, yeah. Africa, there is this mistrust I, 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 over centers policy. Why point. can't there Africa, be an integrated can, approach? One country, I one education point. policy. Okay, What's okay, wrong okay. with that? Africa. Africa, no, I'll just make this quick point. Yes, Regarding one by one. Let's, uh, Bhavna, let, yeah. let have, let's have Bhavna first. And I'm coming to you, Mr. Sarvanan. When we look into the when we look into the policy and you, when we read out the whole thing, it looks so beautiful and it looks perfect. But there is all these clauses. Everything the BJP is doing, I'm so sorry I'm taking the party's name, but then whatever the national government, the central government is doing right now, especially Karnataka, we as Karnatikas, we are facing a lot of problems here about the textbooks and the lessons and the chapter have been taken off. So we have, they've also taken off the chapters of Ambedkar. They've also taken off one of the eminent literary person Sorry, Bhavna, sorry, Bhavna, the... sorry to interrupt you. This is, not, not, this is a... not there in the new education policy. A... No, let her finish, Mr. Issue? Krishna, coming to you. Let, let Ms. Ramanna finish. Why are you bringing yes. the textbook issue here? No, no, we are allowed to bring in whatever points we feel strongly about, sir. Please allow her to make her points. I know about that. And then they've removed the eminent poet, poets' poetries and the lessons about them. So it's about knowing your own culture. So what, what Tamil Nadu is saying, the same thing as what we are seeing. See, the children to be taught the, the, pre, the local native language, the local native history should be taught to them. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not against the central education policy system on the whole. But, why you, but what makes you think it's not being taught? In fact, on the contrary, what I see in the new provisions, mother tongue is advisable, is being advised till fifth standard as the medium of education, something which was not there in the previous 1986 national education policy. So this is a step up, not a step down, if, uh, you know, yes. uh, if, if your concern is about the regional language. Mr. Mohan yes. Krishna, quickly, please. But then... Yeah, let me, let the, me... Yes, let, let Mr. Krishna the, respond. Dr. Ambedkar, they have removed the lesson. They have, they have removed... I got that point. Poetry, that is something really very heartening. Hmm. You know, it's really, really bad. I mean, it's something... So, therefore, there is a sense of mistrust. You must have understood, Mr. Krishna, that because of certain preceding, uh, you know, events, certain antecedents is causing this sense of, you know, lack of confidence in center's policy. So, perhaps there is a problem there. See, what Bhavna Ramana is talking about today is not about the new education policy, that is about the state's uh, revision so of textbooks. Sorry, please, I have not intervened. I have not intervened. That's about yeah. the revision of textbooks she is talking it's about. about that doesn't seeing... come under... Kids should no, no. Be should I talk or should I... No, no, one by one, Bhavna Ramana, hold on. Let Mr. Mohan Krishna respond. See, that is about the revision of textbooks she is talking. That, hmm. See, part of the new national education policy says... We are stressing on the mother language, mother tongue languages very much. Even in professional courses, why not you look into the broader picture of it? Why you are going to the finer points? I am talking, I, I would like to answer one, I mean, uh, ask one question to Sharamanan today. Is Tamil Nadu, is in India, or is, it's an alien, alien state in the country. Tamil is a classical language. We agree, we respect. And Mr. Modi also, wherever he goes, he quotes Tamil, uh, Tamil Sarvagnas, Tirvalluvar, poets and all. Why this discrimination? Why you are bringing this discrimination in the student's level? What is the wrong with these things? 
Okay. What you are so you are raising me, the point of being question. parochial to the what, extent just, 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 that just, now just, this just, parochialism just, just, is creating just. a big divide between the center and the state. I understand there is a certain sentiment of a north-south divide as well here. I want to bring in Nayan Parikh, who There's is a neutral nothing. voice in no, this discussion. No, no, let's no, hear, no, let's no, hear no, an no, educationist. I've heard no, all no, of no, you. No, I think no, it's only fair that somebody who is in the business of education, yes, Mr. Sarvanan, I know you want to come in, but since Mr. Parikh has been waiting for a long time, let's hear him out also on what exactly is the issue with the national education yes. policy that there is resistance from certain states. Mr. Parikh, go ahead, sir. Uh, Afrida, first let us understand that this is a policy, it's not a law. Yes. Policy, yes. by the word, means it is in a way recommending, but not something that is force down your throat. Second, I feel education is something which you cannot force down on somebody. That person has to be willing and person has to embrace it. Third, I feel that if you are saying that this is good for you, you need to believe also that the other person who you think it is good for also understands his own good. And I feel that on that, what Tamil Nadu needs to keep in mind is that the students of Tamil Nadu should not have any adverse impact on their mobility if they go out in other parts of India. Because India is finally, uh, you know, a union. And therefore, if a Tamil Nadu boy or girl, based on whatever they adopt as their policy, goes out and comes to Gujarat, they should not be at a disadvantage. Or there should not be a, a challenge for them to do so. And also globally, our students finally, you know, can be global citizens tomorrow. So we need to align our education policy, keeping all this in mind. And I feel that political consideration should be totally at the back bench. And uh, because it is a concurrent subject, and Afrida, you have pointed it out right, that it is concurrent means both state and center together. If there is a conflict, of course, center can push it down. But I feel at times what is your right to do is it right for you to do? That is some kind of a moral obligation that any person or a bigger entity has. So it might be right, my right to do it, but whether it would be right. This government has already done very consultative kind of discussions in GST. They brought all the states together, discussed it endlessly. Now, discussing it endlessly and hearing all the states out Always is time consuming at times. That's it the be point, Mr. Uh, Parikh, and you rightly said, you know, what important. is expected when it comes to education is a healthy partnership, is a collaboration. The last thing you want is the center state and loggerheads over something like this. Concurrent list encompasses items of concerns of both center and state. Both yeah. will legislate for items in the concurrent list. Education is part of the concurrent list. And yes. why it has been put in the concurrent list is precisely because there needs to be active deliberation and cooperation yes. between the center and the states. What we see happening, Mr. Sarvanan, is, the, is right the yeah. opposite of it. Isn't that unfortunate? Isn't this unnecessary politicization? This uh, politicization, Afrida, is because of the mistrust with the union government. They speak one thing and act in a different way. The Prime Minister waxes eloquence about the uh, importance and the classical language, Tamil, everywhere he goes. But on a policy level, what they do? Do they give us enough funds? 600 crores for Sanskrit. 80 crores every year for appointing Hindi teachers to teach Hindi across the country. What is the amount that is spent on the classic language, not Tamil? Take the other languages. This is the same amount spent, not even a fraction, Frida. Then how do we expect to Afrida, believe this is it union government, which is playing, it's which is about the policy at, issue? No, no, one second. I'll come, come to you, Mr. Sir, Krishna. Sir. Let Mr. Sarvanan complete. Which you were speaking, allow hmm. me to speak. So, Go so, ahead. so this is here. BJP is acting as a Hindi majoritarian party and a Hindi majority in state. <laughs> and 800,000 uh, $800, dollars was spent on promoting Hindi in the United Nations, as though there are only Hindi speaking population outside. So the our problem country. is Hindi, Mr. Sarvanan. The problem is Hindi. But you heard Mr. Nayan Parik say that what is the harm? If Tamil students learn a language that is widely spoken in the country, it might put them, give them an extra edge. Why deprive them of it? Exactly. 
If no, no, that is not the Indian thing. English no, no, medium Dubai, no, 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 this protectionist it's policy it's that your government has adopted, is it in the best interest of the students of Tamil Nadu? Or is this just mere posturing? Yes, Abhira. Yes, Abhira. That is what I want your answer on. Yes, I'm coming to that. See, you are asking about the best interest. It is in the best interest of the DMK. No, no, please respond, Mr. Sarvan. And I asked you a question. Yes, yes, that is what that is what I'm coming to. See, if you look at the top colleges in the country, top if you take engineering colleges, you take top universities. Okay, unfortunately, Mr. Sarvanan's uh, frame is frozen. I don't think it's we can quality hear. Of Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, it's fine now. Yeah, now you're about to hear Yes, me. yes, now I can hear you. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Can I go ahead? Yeah, yeah. So that's what the top engineering colleges, the top universities of the top 100 in the state, the country, or in the state of Tamil Nadu. If you look at the number of medical colleges, the highest number of medical colleges is here in the state of Tamil Nadu. If you look at the doctor population ratio, that is highest in the state of Tamil Nadu. That is because of the quality of education. Have you ever seen anybody complaining about the quality of doctors? from the state of Tamil Nadu. More number of students who are going to the U.S. are from the state of Tamil Nadu. Probably from, uh, uh, they'll be from Andhra also. That's how okay. we show progress. And the reason why software companies are setting up their shops in Chennai is because there are talented pools that is available. More number of industries are coming because skilled people are here. This is, this is proof that Tamil Nadu's education system is all good, all well. And we are saying, Please allow us. We are having an excellent system. We are having a good policy, which is shown proven result. So allow us to do what we what we want to do. Don't meddle with our affairs. That is why. See, the fundamental thing is this gross enrollment ratio. The so what I understand, Mr. Sarvanan, and it has all got to do with uh, with the fact that you know there's been discord over NEET. There's been discord over the three language formula, and therefore it extends to the national yeah. education policy at large. You have no, rejected no, it, 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 it based no, on the no, issues no, that no, have no, no. preceded. Uh, you know, the entire the discourse has, of course, uh, you know, been about the language issue. It has been about need. I do understand, and therefore the One mistrust has extended Apeel. to the national education policy yeah. as well. Is that what seems Apeel to have happened, Mr. Sri Ram? No, no, Let's no, get no, the no, others also no, to no, respond. Yes, Mr. Sriram, is that I what you think is happening here? Okay, 10, 10 seconds, seconds, Mr. Sarvanan, and then Mr. Sriram. Yes. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, we are not opposing it only because it is brought in by the BJP. This is not about that. This is about how good we are, and we don't if want it to have been be Congress, you would have welcomed it, isn't it? And Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu has got an inclusive education system. But the NEP is not inclusive. The union government is slashing but, its budget for the SEST students. But whereas hmm. we are saying for students from 6 to 12 who have studied in a government school, they are entitled for 1,000 rupees stipend. This no, no, what I IDG fail to understand is why slashed. can't there be a collaborative approach? Why that must this be done in a collaborate manner collaborate that the students State, ah. you know, literally challenges the center and says, we reject your policy. We have our own policy. We are doing well. Do not meddle. You use the word, do yes. not meddle. Is that the right approach, yes. Mr. Sriram? It is. See, uh, uh, with due respect to Sir uh, no doubt Tamil Nadu is good in our education, but we are also trying to live in our past glory. The world ahead is changing quite fast, and we need to yeah. adapt ourselves to the, to the coming years. And, and the challenges of students are many. And we are talking about today, even UP has about uh, 55 medical colleges, as much as Tamil Nadu has. Karnataka has got about 60 medical colleges, which is much more than Tamil Nadu has. I mean, uh, numbers can be different. Even but what is colleges. important is, uh, it's, it's a standard of education, which is not you know, consistent even in Tamil Nadu. We go only by marks. We don't have the analytical skill of the student. We don't go by their logical thinking. Education is not and about just math. It's UP about a holistic education, which we lack. And that is exactly the new education policy that talks about. And we have fringe and trivial issues just because it's... It, no, just because no, it please don't shout over each other. This is a civil debate. Just because... No, no, let me complete, Saravanan. Allow me I to talk I couldn't hear well. you. Yes, I complete, had, please. I had the patience to hear you out. So kindly have the patience to hear me out as well. 
So what I'm talking about is a holistic is a holistic education, which I can tell you, being in Tamil Nadu, is 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 not is lacking. In fact, we have the recent Times of India where the grasping sense was 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 analyzed pan India, and we were not great. So let us not keep uh, you know keep saying thumbs thumbs up and saying that we are good, we are good. Let us also agree that there are a long way to go. And just because there is this multiple language or the Hindi that is coming in is the only only objective by for 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 uh, the government to probably avoid national education policy or the new education policy. Rather, let them sit. Yes, there can be differences of opinion, but that is not the point that you will decide on your own. After all, we are a part of India and we are not a separate state as, as Mr. Krishna rightly said. That's my point. Let's have the others respond quickly. Closing comments, Bhavna Ramana, you heard both the sides. Uh, and yes. you, of course, uh, you're not in May favor of in the national Africa, education you, policy to to perceived as an imposition uh, to your state. I'm coming to you, Mr. Krishna. Yes, Bhavna Ramana, your thoughts on, you know, the fact is that ultimately this has, there has to be a way forward. You cannot forever have these conflicting, uh, you know, the, you know with, uh, collision course with the center. It will not take the state forward, will it? Ma'am, uh, I'm so sorry. Earlier it was actually the central government and the state government would be with a collaboration all your days, but not now anymore. The imposition happening from the central government all the time. So they're also taking an extreme step of going on their own, Tamil Nadu. I cannot blame them too. When the central government is taking an extreme step of going on their own and imposing decisions of their own without the consultation of any other state governments, accepting their own ruling party, ruling their Sorry, own... Uh, the one-year period after circular I, was I, given, the new education I, policy I, was rolled I, out one year children, before, the draft I, was sent one year before, before to, be to get the views of all the state governments. Government. How many governments responded? We have been you are talking, you have not trusted upon all state governments. One year time given with the new education policy draft. You could have come and given you a feedback. That's a valid so point though. That That's a valid yeah. point. There was a long process of consultation. Remember that the last education policy was of 1986. It has taken a, over a decade to deliberate over the new provisions and finally when it is formulated, then states come up with their reservations on it. Why weren't these pointed out during the process of consultation? That's, That's a fair were, point. Bhavna Ramana, quickly curious. respond. Yes. Um, is it me? Yes. I wanted you to respond. Why didn't these suggestions come in, these reservations come in during the process of consultation? Ma'am, that's what is happening, ma'am. The, the central government never included the state governments during this whole process. I will never underestimate these educationalists. And then who they have specialized, they have read out, and they've done so many PhDs and understanding the whole education system and things like that. It, I have a greater respect for them. But it's about the central government who did not include the state governments or the other states who are not of their own government during this whole process, then they do, this wouldn't be a problem at all. Okay, Mohan Krishna, is that uh, something that you would like to respond to? The process of consultation was not thorough, it was not rigorous enough, it was not inclusive enough, and therefore you have this issue now. Absolutely, Rabish. As Mr. Nayan Parikh was saying, he is a very senior educationalist. He knows, he has seen a lot of, lot, I mean, it is not just this education policy, previous education policy, maybe previous to that previous also you might have seen. Let me come to the point, crux of the matter today is, earlier, Congress was ruling in the center and DMK was a part of the government and they need not have to discuss or consult or anything. Always the DMK has a problem with the center that they want to, they want all the negotiations to be done through them. That is the attitude of the DMK. I'm sorry, Sharamana, this is the fact of the matter. And Bhavna Ramana is echoing that one, saying that center has not consulted. Come on, Bhavna Ramana. We have a BJP state government in Karnataka. They have consulted. You probably you did not know that. You could have asked the education minister and the higher education minister whether the consultation was not was done or not. Coming to the point, we don't have problem in Karnataka. In Karnataka, we are implementing NEP successfully. Yes, there are teething problems. We are not saying. 
See, reformation is a continuous process. It, it will not see if you start reforming today, if you don't, if you don't reform today, when will you reform then? How long you have to be on consultation only? That is the problem with the Indian politics today. They see certain parties. And it's the same story, even with uh, you know the uh, military recruitment scheme. It's the same story coming over and over again. The fact is that. Uh, you know, there is a certain level of politicization, no denying. But before I wind up, Mr. Nayan Parikh, I want to uh, give you the last word on this. The idea is to take the country forward. The idea is to have an integrated approach. Uh, is the concept of having a national education policy itself a flawed idea? Or do you think such a thing should be there and must be there? I think national education policy is a good idea. But as I uh, told you that let there be a policy with flexibility. Our states uh, in India are as big as uh, some of the countries in Europe or uh, other countries that we're talking about. So if there is a flexibility for them to uh, kind of fine tune the policy to their own requirement, of course, state and center needs to do it together. So state, if it has any reservation, I think center could have these kind of discussions in Tamil Nadu. And if Tamil Nadu party is not ready to go to Delhi or boycott such discussions, mm -hmm. there has to be an atmosphere where the dialogue can happen. And in that, I think the responsibility is of the person who is more powerful. In this case, the central government needs to come to the state government, enroll them, encourage them. It is like my going to my child if the child is not ready to listen to something which I feel is good for the child. And I think in that approach, once it is done, national education policy is the step in the right direction. But if you have five, six states opposing that, then how national it is? We don't want something which is national, but say six, seven states not fully yes. appreciating that. So I think to that extent, drafting a good policy is one, mm -hmm. but making it national so that every state embraces it is another point. It is a huge challenge in. for a country like ours uh, with the kind of diversity that we live in, but it must be worked upon. And I do agree with you that you know, the fact of the matter is the last thing you want is hostility over students' education. There, at least, state and center can come together. This is one area where it's simply not excusable to have this approach of conflict over issues of education policy. There can be a healthy discussion and there can be common ground. That's what I believe. Thank you so much for joining us here in the discussion. Mr. A. Sarvanand, Bhavna Ramanna, Mohan Krishna, Mr. Sriram and Mr. Nayan Parikh. Thanks for joining us.